Great work, Chaffee. You put life into a show that was dying, and now I'll put Grady away for life. Well, I had a lot of help, especially from you. Me? You and your daughter. I told you how much she'd shown me in that square dance number of hers. She was great. Better than great. Aha! Finally to hear you say it. You had me as flim-flam as everybody else, until I saw how really good she was, then turned to see the pride in your face as you watched her. You tell everybody it's a business. But I figured you out, Carmen. You are the stage mother of all time. You married Sid Bernstein, put up with all his affairs and shady deals, just to get your daughter onto the Broadway stage. And so that no one could accuse her of getting there on your coattails, you've always belittled her talent in public, even if she hates you for it. You can't let her know. I want her to think she got it all on her own. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> But how did knowing that help you catch Grady? Oh, it didn't. I just explained why you killed your husband. What? Grady killed my husband. Uh, Grady killed Jessica and Johnny and tried to kill you because he wanted the show closed. But that's exactly what your husband was going to do. Well, then he was killed by someone he was blackmailing. If that was the case, I think they would have taken his little black book with them. He must have told you he was closing the show. He didn't tell me he was closing the show. He told Oscar. Why wouldn't he tell you? You were his partner. Because the partnership was over. He had himself a conniving little ingenue on Sutton Place, and I was out in the street. So he didn't need you. He didn't need anybody. Grady promised him rave reviews on his next three shows. He shut this one down now. So your husband did tell you he was closing the show? No. Then how would you know the terms of a deal he made with Grady moments before your husband died if you weren't the last person to see him alive? He laughed at me. No more shows, no more dreams. After all I'd had to take from him, he laughed at me in a lane like we were nothing. And? And I killed him. Of course you did. What happens to me now, Lieutenant? Well, on impulse, you lashed out against your unfaithful blackmailing husband when he told you your daughter wouldn't get the chance for which you'd sacrificed everything. A decent lawyer might get you a couple of years on a reduced charge. A great lawyer might get you an all-expense-paid weekend in sunny San Diego. <laughs> uh, but you'll have to stand trial. I know. Tell you what, why don't we build up your daughter's part some more? Add another song or two for Nikki, and maybe I don't solve this part of the mystery until after the show opens on Broadway. You would do that? Oh, Frank, you give me that, I'll let you walk me out of the cast parties at Sardi's, straight into police headquarters. I'll have you watch night and day until then. I understand. But if the show goes to New York, what happens with you and Nikki? There's always a spot in the NYPD for a Boston police lieutenant who doesn't mind a cut in rank and pay. You know what, Chaffee? I think you're one of us. We're a special kind of people known as show people. We live in a world full of dreams. Sometimes we're not too certain what's false and what's real. But, But we're, we're seldom in doubt. About what we feel. Lieutenant, your experience with the salt and battery? I think Bobby may need some first aid. He's still a bit wobbly on his feet, but from getting hit on the head by Grady. Let me take a look at him. We've only hours before the curtain opens up, and I'm afraid he may not raise to the occasion. Oh, don't worry, Chris. The cry of places, everyone, will be like smelling salts to any trooper. Now the sound of the orchestra playing its overture will be like pure adrenaline. His aches will be bathed in the warmth of the spotlight, and his spirits will be lifted by the hands of an adoring throng.